Hi, this is Rick with opusevent.com, and this video is going to be focusing on uh, our solo ensemble contest application and specifically what to do after scheduling. How do you get ready for your contest once your scheduling is completed? Uh, just to review, uh, here's the different links on how to get to the different applications of Opus Event. Uh, for this video, we're using the contest.opusevent. Dot com for our solo ensemble contest. What we're going to be covering in the video is three main areas. Number one, how do you email out your schedules to your uh, teachers, directors, to your uh, accompanists, to your judges? Uh, how do you get these schedules out to them? Uh, number two, how do you generate schedule reports for your own use if you want to post them in the building? or uh, perhaps you want to download them to Excel to do something else with them. So what do you do uh, to get those schedule reports? And then finally, we'll go take a look at uh, how do you print your judging adjudication forms if your event is using uh, adjudication forms. Okay, so with that, let's go right into our application. Notice we're at uh, contest.opusevent.com. I've already logged in. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am sitting on the uh, on my contest homepage for a little uh, Oregon Music Educators District Zero testing event that I have available uh, for training purposes. And so uh, when I logged in and selected my event, I go right to my homepage as a teacher or director. But I'm also a uh, contest manager for this particular event. And so I get a whole bunch of other menus up here, uh, and you're probably familiar with some of these. So we're gonna be using, to begin with, we're gonna be looking at how to email out our schedules. And that's done through Manage Contest and the very first option, Entry List. You've probably been on Entry List before. By default, it'll bring up a teacher view showing you a list of all of your teachers. Uh, but you can also look at a location view a list of your schools, uh, how many entries each. You can look at the specific entry view. The, the entries this can be quite long, right? In a schedule, several hundred, maybe even a couple thousand long. You can also look in the accompanist view, showing each accompanist that we have and how many, um, and how many entries they have. Uh, you can look at a student view, which is uh, very similar to the uh, entry view, but it will also show you, uh, like this particular individual, Rick Lyson, is uh, involved in a bassoon solo, but also a small string ensemble. So it'll put those two together for you. You can look at a judging view, how many time slots they have, how many entries, and then a manager summary. But what we're interested in right now <coughs> is how do you go out and notify your teachers of their schedule? And it's fairly simple. Uh, first of all, you select everyone that you want to notify. Now you can uh, you can go ahead and select all teachers. I only have two here, but you know there may be uh, 40, 50, 80, 100 teachers. Who knows? Could be 15. Whatever your event has, uh, you can also clear those selections, or you can select them individually. And what I always suggest when you start out with sending out schedules is just uh, pick yourself if you're a teacher in this event <coughs> and go ahead and send yourself a notification so you see what it looks like. So I'm going to pick myself, uh, Rick Lyson, and then I can send an email to the one teacher that I have selected. And this will bring up an email box which will uh, have your email in, it, uh, in there, or the administrator's email. Uh, you can CC anyone you want, and I'm going to, um, I'm just going to say this is schedule for contest. Then over here in the checkboxes, you can decide which links you want to include, and we want to include the schedule link. Here is your schedule. So this is your note to the teachers. All right, and we'll go ahead and send. Notice up here in the upper left, it's saying sent one emails. And that's fading away. 
So that email has been sent, <coughs> and we need to go ahead and wait for it to uh, to get here, and it'll be here in a minute. Um, and the answer is, there it is. Okay, so we received this email from Opus Event uh, saying, here's your schedule. That's a text that we typed. And I'm going to go ahead and close this browser. Say, I'm okay, I'm just a normal user. I got nothing going on. Um, if I go ahead and click on that link, the schedule link, it's going to, sorry, it did this on a different page. Let me do that again so you can see it happened. All right, there it is. It goes ahead and refreshes the report. Now, here's the entries by user uh, for me. So here's the four different entries I have, which building, which room, what day, what time, and are they eligible for, in our case here, a state-level contest. Okay? Fairly simple to do. And everyone, everyone that you would have checked the box for would have gotten an email like this. But the, the uh, schedule link that they would have uh, goes to their specific schedule. Okay. Let me go ahead and uh, log back in. And I'll show you a little bit different options here. <coughs> select my events, and I'll go right back to Manage Contest Entry List. Okay, if I go do that same thing again, I just select myself, and I send that one email, and maybe I call it Schedule Links, and I can include my Schedule Link. I can also include all of the accompanist Schedule Links. So this includes your teacher link and all accompanists. And when we say all accompanists, um, we're not talking all accompanists in the event. We're talking about the accompanists that, um, that are playing for your particular teacher entries. And so in this case, we'll go and take a look and see when that email has come in. It's already here. So this email has two links for us. It's got this link, which is the one that we had before for entries by user. It also has schedule for an accompanist, which happens to be me as well, but this can be any other name. And so here's the, here is the accompanist schedule for what they're playing for in what building, all right? But that was sent to the teacher. So I'm going to go ahead and close these. I need to sign back in because we came in anonymously to view a schedule. Normally, you wouldn't have to do this, but we're kind of doing it all on one on one desktop. So uh, signing us out every time we view a schedule. Okay, so let's go back to Manage Contest Entry List. <coughs> so in addition to sending schedules to teachers, you can also do the same for accompanists. So here's my two accompanists. I can go ahead and select both of them. Uh, looking to see who the emails are on this. Yeah, that will that'll work. And I can do the exact same thing. Send these two emails. Fine. Uh, it's contest schedule for Saturday or whatever, whatever you want to put. Your schedule link is included and include the schedule. Send, boom. Both the companies have gotten uh, an email or sent an email uh, with their schedule in it that they can go look at anytime they want. 
Here's the email that came in for me. Notice here it's a schedule link just for the accompanist. I go look, I get my my schedule and the other accompanist, they got theirs. Okay, and then I'm gonna have to log in again. <laughs> and select my contest. Okay, the last part is that I wanted to show you, you can do the exact same thing with judges, is you can go ahead and send the judges their, their uh, schedules. By the way, you can also do it at the entry view level. Uh, th these are all of our students, and you could select all pages. So you can select every single student you have, all 100 of them or 500 of them, whatever, and you can send an email and if you want, you can include the schedule link, which will show the student where they're scheduled um, in the contest. And by the way, this is more than just one entry. It could show them <coughs> that, you know, they're playing flute at 8 a.m. in this room and they're playing piccolo at 9.30 in this room and they're um, singing in an ensemble at 2.30 in this room and another ensemble at, at 250 in a different room. So they will get their schedules just like everyone else. So it's up to you on who you want to send your schedules out to. And it can be any of teachers, entries, accompanists, or judges. And if you ever need to resend a schedule, uh, you know, Rick Lyson sends you a note and says, hey, I, I never got my schedule. Fine. I'll just select you only. I'll include the schedule link. Maybe you want to include a company. And you can say here it is again, Rick. <coughs> Schedules uh, included. Notice that we are not sending uh, attachments. On here, attachments are very difficult to get through, especially school emails. So instead, we send a link that will uh, come right back into opusevent.com and give them their schedule. So you can go ahead and send those, sends one email. Uh, the other thing is also notice that you can always tell uh, when the last email was sent to this user. So you can you can uh, confirm that, that that email actually goes out. Okay, so we can refresh. We sent an email at 10.02.47. It's 10.03 right now. Okay, so that does it for sending out your email schedules. You can do it whenever you want. <laughs> Obviously, it needs to be done uh, after scheduling is finished. Uh, if you modify your schedule at all for any reason and they come and follow that this same link later, it will reflect those changes. All right. Okay, let's see if we can move on. Let me get a little more space here. Okay, let's look at scheduling reports. Uh, they are all available for you under the reports menu. <coughs> and let's go take a look at some of the basic ones. First of all, there's um, all entries report. And here it is. This is the information that we dump out, you know, the ID of the entry, name, the instrument voice, the building, room time, how many in the ensemble, if it is, which judge, on and on. So you can look at these. Um, by default, everything comes up in HTML format like this, but you can also send it out to PDF. So I can run this to PDF. Um, it's generating right now, and there's my PDF that just downloaded. So I can open that up and take a look, and here, here's a PDF version of it. You can also do a comma delimited, and I want to show you this specifically, and this is true of all reports in Opus Event. You can always do HTML, PDF, comma delimited, or tab delimited. 
And comma delimited is where you want to go if you want to open this up into Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and run the report. It ran it and it downloaded a CSV for us. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on that CSV. And it opens, at least on my computer, that will open it right up into Microsoft Excel. And now I can do whatever I need to do with this in Excel. Uh, whether you've, if you've done all entries, well, this could be a report that's uh, hundreds or maybe even thousands long. Okay, but here's a quick way that you can extract that data. Okay, but by default, these reports are run in um, in um, HTML format. So that was, whoops, sorry, clicked the wrong thing. That was all entries. We can look at entries by accompanist. This is the same as what the accompanist get, but this time we're looking at every accompanist in the whole event. <clears throat> you can also get this entries by judge. Here's again for every judge in, in the event in which uh, and what their schedule is. We can look at entries by room, which is probably the most common one. Um, you know, which rooms are doing what? We have entries by student, showing you for each student um, which entries do they have, and this will include their um, any ensembles that they're in. Okay. And finally, entries by user, and user in this case is a teacher or director, and so here's a list of your schedules for every single user. This is the same information that the teachers would get if you email their schedules, only they're just looking at their specific schedule. Uh, this report is looking at them uh, all at one time. Okay, so feel free to play around with these reports. Uh, the all entries, entries by companies, judge, room, student, and user. Okay. The third thing I wanted to cover in this video is how do you print adjudication forms? And um, that's also done through the Manage Contest. There is a print forms option about two thirds of the way down. And if your uh, event is eligible for forms, uh, if you're on the right tier, then you'll have that print forms uh, option. The forms that we can print are adjudication and certificates. Adjudication is before the contest, you would need to print those, and certificates would be after the contest runs and all of the scoring is in, all the ratings are in. So we'll go ahead and select adjudication. And at this point, it will show you every time slot that you have. And uh, we're just gonna play around with flutes again because that's where we have data. <clears throat> so I'll pull up the flutes, and here's a list of all of our flutes in room 502 in, in this flute time slot that we have. And notice they're in order. We have an 8 o'clock, an 8.30, an 8.40, an 8.50, and a 9. Uh, there's a column over here saying, have we printed the adjudication form for this yet? And it's blank, so we haven't. So let me show you uh, how first how you uh, how you would print just one adjudication form. We can go ahead and select that form, and we say that we want to print the selected ones. Okay, it brings up a print window, and here's our one page that will contain that adjudication form. I'm going to, uh, normally you'd print this out to a printer. I'm just going to save it as a PDF right now so we can take a look at it. Um, and I'll just call it adjudication test. I've already got one out there. I'll just overwrite it. So if I go pull up that adjudication test, <coughs> first of all, it's important to realize that every uh, event can have 
uh, can and probably will have different adjudication forms. This is one that we developed for uh, Oregon music educators. Uh, this is their format. Uh, so here's the one form and we pre-fill all the information of, you know, which, what time, what room, what, what's the judge name, uh, what's the instrument, what's the entry name, who's the teacher. Uh, we don't have selection or composer on this filled, so it would be handwritten in. Um, uh, this is uh, just uh, static uh, scoring information. And then here's where the judge can make notes. Uh, they have a final judge's signature and a total. All right, but a different organization may have a totally different adjudication sheet. So when I go back now to my um, print forms page, notice that it's it's made a notation that, okay, we have printed this. You've already printed this. You don't necessarily need to do another. So if we go in and select I want to select all that are unprinted. Notice it leaves off number one. And we can clear all of the selections as well. But if we go and select all unprinted and we say print the selected ones, the ones with check boxes, notice we're printing four forms here. So here's page one, here's page two, I'm scrolling down, here's page three. And here's page four, and every single one leaves is different. It's unique to the student, to the time, to the instrument that they're playing. And I can go ahead and cancel this. I, I don't want to dump it out to a printer or to a PDF. But now it's marked those as being printed. I can also select all, and I can reset the selected ones to being unprinted. So I can essentially take that printed flag or that printed indication off. What I suggest when you start is you first come in and uncheck this box. Mark entries as printed. Now I'm just testing here. I just want to see how this thing works. Right? I'm going to take two forms, print selected. Here's my two forms. I run them out to a printer. Do they look okay? Mm, yeah, it looks all right. Well, we have we've done no harm here, right? We haven't marked them as being printed. We're just testing at this point. You can also then go to another uh, time slot. We can go double reads and say, great, let's go ahead and print that one. The difference that you see, the entry name school still looks the same, but now the instrument is bassoon. We're in a different room. Uh, and this one has John Piano Guy is accompanying this bassoon. All right, so you know who's coming in. Okay, and you can come back and reprint and uh, print specific, or you can just cycle through all of the time slots one at a time and print them. Uh, for example, I pull up my brass time slot. Well, I have no scheduled entries here, so there's nothing to print. But I can come back uh, two days later and I can maybe reprint a couple that maybe there were changes or scheduling changes on. So ideally, you can wait until you know, a, a day or maybe day and a half or so before the contest to print these where any final changes have already been made in the schedule. And then you sit down, um, sit down one evening and just go ahead and print all of your time slots out to paper. They're in, they're marked by room and they're always in time order. So they're ready to segregate and just have someone go give those to the judge when they come in and say, all right, here's everything that you need for the time slot for the day. Uh, and here's all the people that you'll be, um, that you'll be seeing today. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to show you. Thanks for spending the time and um, good luck with your contest. Thanks, bye.